Same thing, push these through. I'm happy. Technique come together. Talk about that. Um, man, somehow I'm getting darker every day. It's cooling off a little bit outside. Believe it or not, it's this hot inside. I'm in my living room. And I'm sweating this much, but it's cooling off outside. I'm getting outside a little more and more, uh, more hours in the day. It's still sunburn weather, can be anyway. Um, Guns and Roses, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, some pretty solid deadlifting music. Um, plan for today, you know, this is the beginning of a new 12 week block. Uh, I finished off uh, the last 12 week block pulling the one rep max for a triple, pulling 100% for a triple. Um, so I went back and I uh, decided I was going to get rid of bands for this next 12-week block. I'm going to rerun pretty much everything again like it was. Without bands, uh, I'm going to use chains. I know that chains have always built for me. Using tons of chains do not. Uh, somewhere around 25 kilograms, 55 pounds of chains have always been my magic number. So it adds a little bit of weight, a little bit of resistance. Uh, it makes it a little safer on my hips and back at the top or the bottom of the lift um, and it's pretty much the most I can add and it's still transfer over uh, to where I can take the chains off have a good day and pretty much whatever I can pull with chains I can pull in straight weight uh, so I, yeah, today was 75% uh, um, for an easy double I pulled three with it I think I just I feel better knowing that a double is what it calls for um, and I pulled a triple and I definitely could have kept going. Hips, back, um, everything is really tight. Uh, every single set that I did, every single set that I've done so far, um, has pulled on my elbow a lot. Uh, and remember last week I ripped open my thumb, um, taking the bar, uh, taking the plates 
off of the bar on squats. Scrape it on the buckle of my belt, rip my thumb open. And I've mentioned this many times before, I'm a very slow healer, very, very, very slow healer. So I gotta be careful um, with any cuts. I mean, I've got a cut on my shin from three weeks ago and it's just, it, it takes forever for me to heal. Uh, I got a cut on my Achilles. I just woke up with it last Friday morning and it's all swollen because of the, it's on my Achilles under my sock. I have no idea how it got there. Uh, I gotta be careful with that. Anyway, rambling. Um, I pulled my main sets, then I put my straps on. Man, I really like these old school orange Elite FDS straps. Uh, for a Texas deadlift bar, these things grab in like crazy. <laughs> They're dirt cheap. They really, really are dirt cheap. I mean, this has gotta be the cheapest thing that Elite, FTLs, Elite FTS sells as far as straps go. Um, and they, I can't imagine there being something better for a Texas deadlift bar. Uh, they just, I don't know, they just feel right. The best way to put it. Uh, and they're Texas orange. What can I say? Definitely not Tennessee orange. Uh-uh, we ain't wearing no Tennessee orange. We'll wear some Kentucky blue. Uh, but I, I can pass with some Texas orange. I can get away with that. Um, did my speed sets, added 35 more pounds of chain. Uh, put my straps on and I cannot emphasize this enough for the people who watch my training videos and they, they've listened to stuff that I write and my clients sets are not just sets reps are not just reps they're opportunities if we're doing strict speed work uh, and the goal is is like an immediate one rep max I want to peak you for peak you for a one rep max uh, I want to teach you how to pull a one rep max so if we're doing standard dynamic effort speed deads and we've got like 10 sets of one. So you learn how to approach the bar, get set, grab the bar, explosively go as hard as you can, put the bar down, step back, count to anywhere between 15 and 60 seconds, approach the bar again and repeat until you have two sets in a row where the bar speed has started to slow and then you're done. Does it give you a lot of opportunity to sit around and think about stuff? So if you're someone like me, I'm really trying to figure out my deadlift. Uh, I continue to have my shoulders over the bar, hamstring injuries, back injuries, hip injury. Um, it's thrown everything, gained a bunch of weight injury. Uh, it's thrown everything on my deadlift off. So the way I've got this set up here is with a decent amount of weight. I, it called for 140 kilograms plus the chains. I just didn't want to take another plate off and then replace it with a bunch of coins. Uh, so I left it at 150 plus the chains. Um, what this does, it, this allows me with enough sets and enough reps and enough rest in between the sets that I can pull, I can step back, come over here and sit down and try to figure out what went wrong and what went right. And that's important. When you've got a coach there with you all the time, especially in like in, in weightlifting, you do a set, you know, or, or you might be doing sets, sets of three, you know, you do a snatch and then your coach is immediately talking to you while you're resetting everything up, getting the plate set up again, getting your hands back on the bar, getting set, ready to go. Your coach is coaching you verbally right then and there. Um, and then they're coaching you in between sets. You have time to coach. Um, that's what I'm giving myself time to do. So I pull a triple, first set, second set, didn't feel that great. Third set, my position clicked. Something happened that hadn't happened in a long time. Uh, try to maybe show it from the side view. I shoved my knees forward into the hole, into the pocket that my arms created. I've made videos and videos uh, and videos about how to do that, how important that is to shove your knees into the pocket that you create with your arms. Uh, but that's the first time I've done that in a couple of years and just magically back didn't hurt, hips didn't hurt, legs got into the lift, shoulders went behind the bar and everything flew up effortlessly. Uh, so rather than just having that good one set and stopping and calling it, I backed up and said, well, let's repeat it, let's try it again. So I rested a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, get back under the bar. So I did set number three, four, five, and six all the same way. Uh, set number six was not perfect, was not perfect. But after watching the video already on my phone, it was really, really freaking close. Looked much better, shoulders were behind the bar, uh, appearing the, the entire lift, putting me in a very, very strong position to make progress. 
So had I not given myself the sets, the reps, and the time to figure stuff out and to repeat myself to get better, it might not have happened. So, uh, and that's the big thing I tell even my training partners. Don't just walk in and, and do one hard set. That's the worst thing about, you know, the five, three, one program. You've got one set to figure stuff out. You know, that's the only good thing about the boring, but big program. At least you're going to back down and you're going to do some sets and reps where you can figure stuff out. What went wrong? What went right? And can you repeat it? So if you only do one hard set, what if you screw up? What if you don't figure out what you were doing wrong or what you were doing right? The whole week of training, I mean, if you're in a rut and you can't figure stuff out, you've only given yourself one set all week to figure out what's going on with your deadlift and you don't figure it out, you've wasted the whole freaking week. You do that two, three weeks in a row, man, you've wasted a whole month of training. You've gone backwards. But you do some sets and some reps and give yourself some time in between sets to figure stuff out, then you're going to make some progress. hope that really sinks in with somebody watching this video. Give me a few minutes. I want to do some kind of accessories. Um, it is late. Not as late as usual. It's 1.15 um, in the a.m. Uh, so I'm going to at least do some lat accessories. I'm going to give myself a good chance to recover. Uh, it's been a stressful day and I don't want to add much more to that stress. I prefer to uh, uh, make a little more progress. Feel a little better tomorrow than worse. So give me a few minutes. We'll put, uh, put the Guns N' Roses back in the headphones. We'll get to moving again. close enough for government work anyway. Um, man, I don't think, I don't think the video is going to show how productive this training session was. Uh, let me see. Did the demo deadlifts. I can't, I don't even think of the, the weights about 400 pounds or so. No. Uh, what's it? 375 plus 55, it's 425 plus 35. So we're like at 460, 470, something like that at the top <clears throat> on the dimmel deadlifts for a triple. Wow, I didn't think about that. That's some pretty decent weight. Um, felt really solid as well. Um, you know, it comes down to great body positioning. I, I don't think I had the snap and the torque out of the hole that I wanted. But that's okay. It's a lot more weight than what I thought. Those chains, they swing a little bit. Um, wow. Uh, the 10 second deadlifts, I don't think it was quite 10 seconds, but that was the purpose was that it was supposed to be a 10 second deadlift, five seconds up and five seconds down. It's really hard to come out of the hole slow uh, with a, I don't know, I know that's not a heavy weight. It's not a heavy weight for you. Shouldn't be a heavy weight for me. 
uh, but all things put in, into perspective for that exercise for me for today at that time and, and position uh, the five seconds up five seconds down 10 second deadlift coming out of the hole slow was heavy uh, so and I, I didn't want to lose that rhythm of getting in the right spot so uh, you know I didn't want to lose that rhythm that I had with my regular deadlifts uh, and my speed technical deadlifts as well so I dipped down a little hard came up a little fast uh, tried to make up for it when I got around the knee uh, and on the way down don't know how that went I'll have to watch it on video you guys will know before I say this uh, the, th the three second deadlift at the end um, the concept behind that is, that, you know, if I take a lifter that's been doing the timed deadlifts, the 10 second deadlifts, uh, five second deadlifts, you know, things like that, uh, or mostly I do 10 second and six seconds. So five second up, five second down, three second up, three second down. We'll, we'll do that for three to four weeks um, just till they start to make any kind of progress on that. And the thing is, once they start, once anyone starts making progress on a slow timed deadlift, they're building muscle, they're building technique, but they're also learning to be slow. They're losing their explosiveness. So if they need a few more weeks of technical work and muscular work, um, immediately the first thing I'll do is I'll go to a three second deadlift, which is an explosive deadlift on the way up, <clears throat> and then a very slow three to five second negative on the way down, focusing on hitting those perfect positions on the way down and then being explosive on the way up. Normally what I always do with, with clients is do doubles on those because the key is you want to be explosive on the way up, slow, perfect, technical on the way down, and then be able to be explosive again on the way up after that. And then you can take it down as fast as you want to or slow again. Uh, you know, but the key is explosiveness. Explosiveness, man, I'm worn out. To be explosive on the first one, uh, technical, perfect, slow on the way down, and to still be able to have explosive torque on the rep after that. Uh, so I knocked those out, went to the band rows. Uh, with the band rows, I really had it in my mind to do a bunch of rows. Lats, elbows are just not cooperating. Um, my, my right elbow, I, I know that a lot of it has to do with you know, I'm, I'm using that right hand on the computer mouse and I've worked a ridiculous amount of hours the last several weeks. Uh, but I tend to have my elbow sitting on the armrest of a chair or the, uh, on the edge of the table. I've drove, in the, drove my son in the, in the car, my wife's car, uh, for hours today and I had my elbow uh, on the side window. I know that's not good for me. And then a lot of the bicep work, uh, the bicep ties into that elbow as well. It's not feeling great. So I skipped biceps today, uh, but I am gonna do stones on Thursday. So they're gonna get hit on Thursday. Maybe I'll do some curls on Thursday as well. Probably won't if I'm being honest. Then I went outside for some super secret reverse hyper exercises that I did not get on video. So I can't share with you no matter what, or maybe I did get them on video. I just sent them to my clients. I do a lot of that. I do a lot of work where I video stuff with my phone. Uh, and then I just, I put them on YouTube um, unlisted and then I send the links off to clients uh, and then if it's something I think is really beneficial for a lot of people I'll video it with this good camera uh, a few months later and, and put it out um, but I did video some stuff some ab work some hip flexor work with my phone I'll try to get that uploaded those are they're absolute killers um, I need a handrail on both sides for better balance at least to, for right now anyway um, don't tell anyone, but I still have abs at 290 to 300 pounds. Uh, my belly's just extended out. So um, those hip flexor and ab exercises have gotten me all torn up. Uh, my hip flexors and abs are just, um, man, they're tight. Uh, came back in here, got on the rower. Um, two rounds on the rower felt really, really good. Uh, that was uh, the, the second round was really really good cardio for me had me breathing quite heavy at the end The kind where you can feel your heart just banging against your chest uh, And you can feel those your lungs squealing a little bit. So I need to continue to touch on that um, Two three four times a week <clears throat> And then keep the mainstay of my rowing just movement just you know get, get a rhythm get the movement get the body keep the body moving I can already tell you I've been doing the rower for um, two weeks now, something like that. 
Uh, my circulation was already better. My legs, my feet, um, ankles, knees. Um, you know, I've got extremely sore all through my inner thighs and outer thighs and hips several times. My abs are getting and staying sore, uh, but not a painful sore, just like, hey, we've been worked kind of sore. So um, all around a great training session. Cannot complain at all. This is still part of the shrinking the core lift and expanding all the accessories. Gives me a chance to uh, focus on all the building uh, exercises as well as to try new things so that when all this comes back around again, um, I continually have a better and better picture of what's working for me right now and what's going to work for me long term. Now, I did have, I did have a question that came in from a, a client earlier and they were noticing uh, my deadlift program. Notice that mine looks a lot like theirs. And they're asking if it's the same one. And I did say from 10 meters away, from 30 feet away, yes, looks the exact same. Uh, from one meter away, from three feet away, no, it looks completely different. So if, if you look at things from a distance, you can say, oh, that, it, that, that's it, the exact same thing. But when you get up close and you look at all the finer details, uh, it's completely different what I'm doing and, and what some of my clients are doing. And I think that's important because everybody has to know what works for them and what fine details to adjust. Um, and if you're one of those clients where I'm letting you pick and choose your accessories, one, I really trust you. Um, two, you're making smart choices over and over. And it's because I think the basis of this program is, you know, you may finish with the core lift and you may finish with the technical speed lifts uh, and be fried totally dead fried or what if you're competing in strongman and your body's worn out anyway um, or what if you squatted two days prior or what if you're what if you've got a heavy squat a max squat two days from now you know you have to pick and choose your accessories based upon how you feel uh, what you've done prior and what's coming up in the future um, so I, I think that's that's very very key with the clients that I'm, I'm letting pick and choose their accessories right now there was something else I really, really wanted to say, and it's just jumped my mind. Completely jumped my mind. I know what it was. It just hit me. I was laying out. Uh, someone asked me why I've got my training max set so low on my deadlift program. Now, I've, I just finished a 12-week, my 12-week deadlift program. And, and you have to remember that when I began the 12-week deadlift program, my training max was probably somewhere around... 140 kilograms, 308 pounds. The heaviest I had pulled up to that point was 100 kilograms, 220 pounds for several reps. I think 20 reps or something like that, or 12 or 13. I don't really remember. I did it for a contest. But I tore my right hamstring, the hamstring where it ties in to the glute piriformis. Uh, so I began the 12 week programming with a rotating, increasing training max. So if I began at 75%, um, it was 75% of what I could do then. And then the next week I sat down like, you know what, that was easy, I can do this. And the next week I can do this, the next week I can do this. And then I settled in, you know, I had the first four weeks where I was really trying to figure out what I could do safely and what accessories I could do without things really, really hurting. Uh, and, 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 you know, once the first four weeks pass and then I reset and go back and start pressing everything again, uh, I settled on a training max uh, I, I think it was uh, 220, so it's like 485, something like that, plus the bands that were on the bar. And the bands were anywhere between 50 and 65 pounds. They tend to vary every single week. Uh, every single week when I weighed them, they weighed something different. So um, that was what I settled on, and that's what I continued to build upon. So even though I tripled my one rep max at the very end of the training session, um, I didn't automatically calculate all that. Uh, and, and, and then just bump up my training max by uh, 50 pounds. You know, can I deadlift 50 pounds more? Absolutely. Uh, can I pull 600? I'm pretty sure I can pull 600 raw, but could I do it safely? And could I do training based off a raw 600 deadlift safely for 12 weeks? Probably not. Not right now. But there's nothing coming up right now. What's coming up is next year. I mean, I need to be strong in July. That's pretty much it. I need to be strong in July and August. So I sat down today and, and wrote up my new 12-week block. 
uh, with lots of freedom, but everything is based off of a 235 kilogram one rep max, which I think is around 517 pounds, plus 55 pounds of chains, 25 kilograms of chains. That's what it's based upon. I'm pretty sure I can do that every week, fairly safely. Um, I have enough room to spare that I can run 12 weeks on this program based off of this. I can reset, increase again, maybe switch to straight weight, back to chains, chains and bands, whatever I need to focus on at that point. Run a second 12 week wave again. Reassess after that what I need to do. Straight weight, bands, chains, mega bands, mega chains, in a suit, briefs, I don't know, straps, partials, whatever it may be, and run a third 12 week cycle of this deadlift program. And then it's still, still not even July yet. So that still gives me the month of July to dial things in to be able to have a pretty solid deadlift in August to look at somehow maybe qualifying for Masters World Strongest Man. So that's a big plus. So if, if you're looking at, I'm not pushing weights right now. I know that is hurting me in the long run. Uh, actually, maybe it's not in the long run. I know that's hurting me at some point because my body's not handling heavy weight every single week. And I know that my body would grow from handling the heavier weight. I know that my body would grow from max effort type of stuff. For sure, absolutely, if I was at my gym uh, in, in the village, I would be pulling much heavier. If I wasn't training at one to two o'clock in the morning, I would be pulling much heavier. If there was a training group around, I guarantee you I'd be taking heavier singles because it would be on the bar and I would get pissed off to watch somebody else do it. But that's not the case and I need to be smart. So this is where I am right now. Uh, and I'm playing the long game. I've got 35 more weeks before I have to do anything decisive. And I need to play the game, which is going to allow me to build the accessories, to build all my weaknesses, and to slowly build my deadlift as safely as possible. Save it for next year. That's it, guys. Wrapping it up. Um, I've got to make sandwiches for everybody tomorrow for school. Pack backpacks. Get child seats in cars. Um, I've got one more program to write. Uh, a little bit of food to eat. Maybe a couple of cookies. And uh, get my butt to bed. We'll see you guys on Wednesday for some box squats. Have a good one, guys.